Uh, everybody meet Daphne. Daphne is a patient of ours for about a year now. We met her last year after a trip to the ER where she presented vomiting blood. Daphne was in very good health until suddenly, out of nowhere, she started vomiting blood. She went to the emergency room near where she lives and in the emergency room, for the first time ever, she was diagnosed with cirrhosis of the liver. Now this is a woman who has had exactly 24 <laughs> alcoholic beverages in her entire life. Isn't that right? That's right. All Absolutely. Right. So, so this, is a, this is a case of developing cirrhosis in the absence of alcohol overindulgence. Because of the food supply in our country and predominantly high fructose corn syrup in our food. So, what so did Daphne, we do? Daphne was uh, given this scary diagnosis in the emergency room, and she was to follow up with a gastroenterologist who specializes in liver disease, and she did, but she came here for another opinion. And we put her on a list of supplements and herbals, got going, and then a few months later decided to have a fibro scan done so that we could document the condition of her liver, and then we started a therapy called EECP. In the meantime, Daffy had gotten the bleeding areas taken care of, um, but she had had another bleed. Isn't that true, Daphne? The <clears throat> second one. The second episode, episode uh, where she actually went back and she, um, they, they say she bled about two units of blood. She did not receive a transfusion. But um, after that, we uh, came up with a plan for Daphne to use something called EECP, sort of off-label. There's only been one study in the literature that we could find of EECP being used in the cases of patients with hepatic cirrhosis, and it had proven to be safe, so we felt it was a safe choice for her, and she was all gung-ho about doing it and was one of our most diligent patients she ever. She did everything yes. else. She had to come from her home, uh, which is quite a ways from here, every day for about an hour and a half and be on the EECP machine five days a week for seven weeks in a row, and she did it. And the last fibro scan, the difference between the two? Well, the first fibro scan was what you would expect. It was a bit of a mess. She, um, you were moderately severe fibrosis, and, and the stiffness calculation of the liver was calculated at about 26 kilopascals, which is a stiff, stiff liver. Mm -hmm. um, she uh, did what we asked. She put in the time coming here for EECP, and we did a second fibro scan at the same institution uh, where she did her first one so we could have some continuity. And at first she was in the moderate least to severe uh, category. Now she's in the mild to moderate category. But even more impressive, I think, is that the level of stiffness has come down from 26 kilopascals to six, which wow. is amazing. The only studies we've <laughs> ever seen uh, with uh, trying to reverse fibrosis of the liver, bring the stiffness factor down one, one kilo past one. one. So this was really uh, 20. an eye opener. This yes. is 20. Um, so Daphne, uh, can you share with the people that are watching this um, uh, your experience, the whole story from your side? The whole story from my side is, uh, and like they said, I was uh, diagnosed with Cirros liver cirrhosis and I'm not a drinker so couldn't figure out what was going on and basically my uh, quote unquote regular doctors said well you just have to wait to have a liver transplant I was like well I don't really like that plan of care so um, another friend had shared that they had some great experience here with the docs so I made an appointment came and like they said they gave me the supplements um, and then they uh, offered the EECP which, like they said, is an hour every day, or five days a week for seven weeks. Um, and so initially it was kind of one of those things like, wow, I don't know if I can do this. I can lay here strapped down for an hour. <laughs> um, but, you know, modern technology is great, so put my earbuds in, listen to music, podcasts, whatever I needed to for the hour, and um, it became very doable. Um, most of all, in the beginning, I, I mean, when I first came the, for the first appointment, I didn't feel good. Um, and within, well, within four months, I felt much better, um, especially along the lines of like my, just my strength and just my overall well-being. I uh, felt so much better. And then when we added in the, the EECP, um, 
I mean, I felt like I had worked out every day for an hour. And I know that's not what it does, but it felt that way. Not not pain, but just feeling better. Um, so at the at the end of the first session, because um, I think we had some difficulties with the machine, then I did a, you know another second round of it. And just each time felt stronger and stronger to the point where I was like, okay, you know, I know what the doctor's saying. I know what my lab work says, but I feel so much better than I had felt before. And obviously it's not just one thing. It's everything together um, between the supplements, between the EECP and just, you know, having the desire to feel better and to heal um, definitely comes into play. You know, you have to, you have to have that desire and that inner person wanting to heal also um so that's my experience has been great um the staff's great they've all been very caring and diligent in their care and just you know following up and following through on my questions that i might have so um overall it's just been a great experience and you know doing another round look i'm looking forward to that just to see what else it can do you know my anticipation is that the liver will completely return to normal at this point um with where I am now. I don't see any reason why it would not. Exactly. With the progress you've made, that's where we're going. So. Yes. And Benzi, maybe do you want to speak to what would happen in Western medicine if she showed up in your office? <laughs> Again, with such uh, a severe condition, yeah. like with esophageal varices, I would definitely, um, you know, like uh, Daphne was mentioning, we the ulti- that's like a severe situation. So the only go there would be, you know, like put a bandage over it, mm-hmm. octreotide would award, you know, all of that. Or I would do also, uh, she would be like waiting for a liver transplant. Exactly. That's what we would do in right. such a severe condition. Right. Uh, there's nothing much we would, you know, yes. recommend at that right. point. Right. Um, there are shunts that can be put in the liver. There yeah. are ways to ban the esophageal varices to uh, minimize the bleeding. Um, but what we're hoping is that the liver softens up enough so that the portal flow doesn't have to go around the liver, can go through the liver again and, and help her digest and function normally. And she wouldn't be feeling so much better if something hasn't improved yes. along those lines. Her Definitely. vigor her vigor is completely changed. Um, and uh, we just think the sky is the limit uh, with such uh, yeah. a yes. situation. And again, we're in uncharted water. All right. we can do yes. is um, uh, reason this out, and it stands to reason that she's going to do very well. Yes. We're very proud of you. Very proud indeed. Yes. Hey, okay. and I am pleased to be uh, in your care. But Thanks. example of someone who didn't uh, take a passive approach right. yes. to her well-being. This took work and effort and s- nerves of steel to get through. Yes, so um, our hat's off to you, Daphne. Yes. Hey, I, I appreciate the opportunity. I appreciate y'all thinking outside the box. Oh, <laughs> how can we go? Okay. Thank All right. Thank you. Have a great vacation. <laughs>